fifth grade. We are going to be introducing our new novel today. It is The View from Saturday by E.L. Konigsberg. Is that name familiar? It's because she is the author of both The View from Saturday and From the Mixed Up Files of Miss Basilie Frankweiler. This will be an author study which will allow us to compare the two novels, compare characters, look at the writing style of the author, and discuss kind of how we see her taking inspiration and putting it into two different works. So before we start reading, what I like to do usually with you is sort of a preview and an examination of what we see and what we think and what we wonder about. So I would like everyone to get a piece of paper. If you are choosing to type this to share with me, then I suppose you're gonna need to open up a new document. Before you begin, before you open your book, from looking at the front, what are some things that you see? So make a list of things that you see. I'm going to keep talking. If you need time to do each of the tasks, just pause the video and then play again once you've done what I've asked. So first, just write down the things that you see. Then you'll make a list of what you think. What do you think is happening here? What do you think is going on on the front? What are some details that you have some thoughts about? Next thing you'll need to write is what do you wonder? What are some questions you have based off the front? You should have a lot of questions. There's not a ton of detail on here. So what do you wonder based off what you're seeing here? So everybody, by this point, You've probably paused and written out what you think from looking at it, what you, or sorry, what you see from looking at it, what you think, and then what you wonder about before we've read the book. Now I'm going to read the back to you, and you're going to do a little bit of response to that. Oh wait, hold on, I forgot one. Next thing, underneath the see, think, wonder, I want you to write, what do you think the title means? I'm just going to throw that one out there. That one will not get explained today. Just write down, I think the title means, so the view from Saturday, what do you think that means? <laughs> Once again, if I keep talking and you need more time, just pause the video. I obviously wouldn't go like this in class, but there I can see you and how long you need. All right, I'm gonna read the back and then I'm gonna have a few questions that you wanna respond to about this. Meet the souls. Noah who quite by accident was best man at the wedding of Ethan's grandmother and Nadia's grandfather. Nadia, a hybrid with a halo of red hair, a dog that's a genius, and a fondness for baby turtles. Ethan, the silent second son of one of Epiphany's oldest families, who discovers he likes halos. And Julian, the strangest person on the school bus, who starts everything by inviting the others to a tea party. How did Mrs. Olinsky, returning to teaching 10 years after being paralyzed in an automobile accident, choose these four to be her sixth grade academic bowl team? And how did this unlikely foursome become even unlikelier champions in far more than just the state middle school competition? The View from Saturday is a rich and rewarding journey that answers these questions and raises many more. Okay, before we get started, based off of what we've read here. Which character do you find the most interesting? Which one do you want to learn more about? So we have Noah, Nadia, Ethan, and Julian. You'll need to write which character it is that you find really interesting based off their description here. That you want, so interesting, you want to learn more about them. And maybe something particular that you wonder about them. Maybe you read it and you're like, Okay, so wait, what does this mean? Or why did they do a certain thing? So who do you think is most interesting based off this very little description that you get? And then what's a wonder? What's something you want to know more? Okay, I am going to read for you the introduction. The book is not itself broken up into necessarily um, numbered chapters. It's just titled and it has different narrators each time. So I'm going to be read. well, okay. There's some numbered bits and there's sections within the numbered bits. So I'm going to read to you what is technically the introduction. 
Uh, it is four pages. Each page will have a question. So as I go through, I will read, I'll stop, I'll write up the question, and then I'm just going to keep reading, pause it, so that you have time to answer. It'll be easier if you're still on that page. And then um, ne the week after, so when we come back from break, we will get going right into this first chapter section, this first narrated section of the story. Um, I would do it over break. However, we're not giving work over break. But I do want us all to have the chance to Zoom conference together as a class. I'm going to try and do that for this Wednesday. And I do want the chance for us to maybe do it during the week of break. And I will ask parents about that and see what they think. Um, maybe we have two chances for all of us to get to see each other and talk and maybe play a game or something. Okay, let's get started. Everyone can open up with me to eight, page one if you'd like to follow along. One, Mrs. Ava Marie Alinsky always, ha always gave good answers. Whenever she was asked how she selected her team for the academic bowl, she chose one of several good answers. Most often, she said that the four members of her team had skills that balanced one another. That was reasonable. Sometimes she said that she knew her team would practice. That was accurate. To the district superintendent of schools, she gave a bad answer, but she did that only once, only to him, and if that answer was not good, her reason for giving it was. The fact was that Mrs. Olinsky did not know how she had chosen her team, and the further fact was that she didn't know that she didn't know until she did know. Of course, that is true of most things. You do not know up to and including the very last second before you do. And for Mrs. Olinsky, that was not until bowl day was over, and so was the work of her four sixth graders. They called themselves the Souls. They told Mrs. Olinsky that they were the Souls. Hey, baby. Sorry, Colby's here. Long before they were a team, but she told them that they were a team as soon as they became the Souls. Then after a while, teacher and team agreed that they were arguing chicken or egg. First question. What... Does Mrs. Olinsky have students competing in? These are all, I believe these are all right there questions. Page two, like I said, answer the question, pause it, and then play again to listen to me. Whichever way it began, chicken or egg, team or the souls, it definitely ended with an egg. Definitely an egg. People still remark about how extraordinary it was to have four sixth graders make it to the finals. There had been a few seventh graders scattered among the teams among the other teams, but all the rest of the middle school regional champs were 8th graders. Epiphany had never, be, be, had never before won even the local championship, and there they were, up on stage, ready to compete for the state trophy. All four members of Maxwell, the other team in the final round, were in the 8th grade. Both of the Maxwell boys' voices had deepened, and the girls displayed lacy bra straps inside their t-shirt necklines. The fact that the necklines were out sized, and that the two pairs of straps matched, they were apricot-colored, made Mrs. Olinsky believe that they were not making a fashion statement as much as they were saying something. To her, four sixth graders, puberty was something they could spell and define, but had yet to experience. Unlike football bowls, there had been no season tallies for the academic teams. There had been no best of five. Each contest had been an elimination round. There were winners, and there were losers. From the start, the rule was, lose one game and you are out. All right, so my next question, which I had already written up, who are the two final teams? So Mrs. Olinsky has a team. We know that they're a team of sixth graders. Um, they contrast them with most of the other competitors, which are eighth graders, and they kind of um, show you this distinct difference. Sixth graders are kind of fresh in the middle school. These eighth graders are older, um, they're trying to act more mature, they're trying to dress more mature, and there's just a distinct, like, divide. So we have Ms. Olinsky's team, and we have the team that they're up against. Who are those two final teams? What are their names? Right, I'm going to keep reading, then I'm going to pick up 
from the bottom of the page going to page three for the third question. So it was on bowl day. At the start of the day, there had been eight regional champs. Now there were two, Epiphany and Maxwell. It was afternoon by the time they got to the last round, and Mrs. Olinsky sat shivering in a windowless room in a building big enough and official enough to have its own zip code. This was Albany, the capital of the state of New York. This was the last Saturday in May, and some, some robot, human or electronic, had checked the calendar instead of the weather report and had turned on the air conditioning. Like everyone else in the audience, Mrs. Olinsky wore a short-sleeved t-shirt with her team's logo across the front. Maxwell's were navy and Epiphany's were red and were as loud as things were permitted to get in that large, cold room. The audience had been asked not to whistle, cheer, stomp, hold up signs, wave banners, or even applaud. They were reminded that this bowl was for brains, not brawn, and decorum, something between chapel and classroom, was the order of the day. Epiphany sat on one side of a long table, Maxwell the other. At a lectern between the two of them stood the Commissioner of Education of the State of New York. He smiled benevolently over the audience as he reached inside his inner breast pocket and withdrew a pair of reading glasses. With a flick of his wrist, he opened them and put them on. Mrs. Olinsky hugged her upper arms and wondered if maybe it was nerves and not the quartering wind blowing from the ceiling vents that was causing her shivers. She watched with bated and visible breath as the commissioner placed his hand into a large, clear glass bowl. His college class ring knocked bottom. Had the room been two degrees colder, the glass would have shattered. Great. Right. Next question. Why is Mrs. Olinsky physically uncomfortable? He withdrew a piece of paper, unfolded it, and read, What is the meaning of the word calligraphy, and from what language does it derive? A buzzer sounded. Mrs. Olinsky knew whose it was. She was sure of it. She leaned back and relaxed. She was not nervous. Excited, yes. Nervous, no. The television lights glanced off Noah Gershom's glasses. He had been the first chosen. Okay, so. Oops. Hmm. That's weird. There we go. All right, last question. What causes Miss Olinsky, Mrs. Olinsky's feelings to change? Colby. What causes Mrs. Olinsky's feelings to change. Okay, so number three focused on kind of her physical feelings, and now this one's looking at actual like, emotional feelings. All right, I know this was a really short little introduction, but I don't want to give you too much work this week. It's a short week. Um, this Thursday is Holy Thursday, and then we have Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. Um, I am excited for you guys to get to celebrate Holy Week at home. Um, yes, it's sad that we won't be able to be at church, but you have this opportunity to try something new and pray differently together. And I hope that you're able to take that, and I hope that we all get something really good out of it. Uh, so, this is the introduction to The View from Saturday. You should have your think, or your see, think, wonder, responses to the front, answers to the questions from the front and back that I gave you, and then the four square with these four questions. I will also put these four questions into the description below, but remember, you can always go back and watch if there's something that you missed. Bye!